so that a person can move forward, so that he can use such a style, he has to have the perfect defense. He has to have it such that he has no fear. He has to be sure in his defense. For this reason, this defense is worked out in the gym up until a thorough grasp of this defense is obtained to be certain that an enemy cannot harm you in any way. If you analyze the fight between Lewis and Tyson, Tyson was knocked out as he ran counter to all principles of this system. Here is a straight advance and throws himself towards an opponent. So what Lewis did now and what Tyson actually did is going to become the biggest danger for Tyson. That was a very strange fight. There was no peekaboo at all. It was just a mere attempt of two men to prove who is stronger linearly. Gotta move more, where slips, ducks, moves. Why don't you move more? Well, anyways, everything is clear as the day. How can Tyson not see it and not understand? Tyson has violated all the principles of this system. Well, this is no longer boxing. That was a shooting. But Peekaboo is built based on a different principle. No one tries to figure out who is stronger. A helpless opponent is just shot at. This very system of defense is what makes an opponent helpless when he cannot deliver strikes with both of his hands and you in contrast can deliver strikes with both of your hands. And again, let me repeat this. This is achieved by means of this defense system, which is studied in every bit and piece in the gym. And one is made sure multiple times with a sparring trainer. There is no way you can be certain in a defense if you do not get hit, if you have no idea of it, if you have never tried it, before a fighter gets in the ring, he is deeply persuaded, physically persuaded, that there is no way he can be hit. And that is the reason why people win. He was a very good in slipping in an engagement. This art is fully forgotten by him. concern with his pupils was not to get hit. Nobody was openly taught that style outside of the fighters and the people that Cuss had close to him. There is no book on this style. Even the book by Floyd Patterson, A Manual on Boxing, is a book on boxing. It is not a book on the peekaboo style. Everybody that trained with that style understood it was secret. Second part of the movie is dedicated to peekaboo style, which was created by brilliant Kazdamara. To be exact, it's dedicated to the defensive style of the art. All right. All right. Is she waking now? Yes, I mean, but the, 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 Outstanding ones always grab attention of people. Needless to say, there will always be ones who will want to destroy that phenomena, who will want to erase it from the memory. Relatively recently, there was an arisal of such an opinion regarding the achievement of Mike Tyson, that he became a champion on the ring owing to 52 block style. As for the role of Kazdamara, they claim it to be a conventional one. Authors of this opinion try to persuade the readers that the secret of Iron Mike is not in his trainer, not in his system, but in the 52 blocks technique. For Cus, if you're not getting hit, you're not getting discouraged. If you're not discouraged, you're more capable and confident than somebody that takes a punch to throw a punch. Devised a defensive style, and the peekaboo style was at 
at first a defensive style so that you would be able to be hit. Kuss dedicated enormous significance to defense. And it is rational as the philosophy of Kuss is tied to the subject of fear to a great extent. And when a person is not defending, he is scared. In 1959, Kuss told a Life magazine reporter the origins of the peekaboo style. It came out of the fear that every boxer exhibits. Tyson not only has a very hard, terrific punch in either hand, but he has developed elusive qualities and has the most important quality, the will to win. He has the desire to win. He wants to be the best. And with a fellow with this type of competitive spirit, plus the knowledge that he has gained and the punching power, I can't see him lose. The peekaboo stance itself is a frontal one, which makes it possible to deliver strikes with both hands. As I understand it, can we look at attack and defense equally? Exactly equal. Every moment of defense puts you in a position of attack, and you attack without one moment hesitation. The moment you move to your new position, you are already attacking. There are different approaches to defense that exist in today's world. Some try to use their weak and strong side, but in this case, Cus was advantageous over all others, meaning he was so superb in using strong sides of his boys and hid the weak sides from opponents so that opponents would be in a very vulnerable position. Here is what I mean. From the point of neurophysiology, a tall person, two meters high, and pay attention that all of the students are different. So picture a tall guy who has long hands. Correspondingly, he has a certain advantages over one who does not have such long hands. Subsequently, this strong side of the person could be used in a fight. There is a study made on what are the strong qualities, and they are maximally used in a fight. According to the book by Douglas Century, Street Kingdom, 52 block style takes its origin in American prisons in black gangster circles. I will share briefly what the book is about itself and will quote directly from the book about Mike, about other fighters and about 52 block style itself. I have to tell you that Street Kingdom has an exceptional genre. It is a simultaneous compilation of memoirs, interviews and personal stories. Author starts his narrative with how he met a gangster whose name was Big K and what they went through together. Also, he gives examples of fights in which 52 block style was used. Additionally, as we have said before, author sends a message that implies that the secret of Iron Mike is not in the legendary coach Casdemato, not in the unique peekaboo system, but as if in 52 block style that he allegedly learned as a boy in mean streets. If I can slip to my left and smother his right hand right here and smother it, I've just taken away thousands of punches because the only punch that, that he can do is something maybe with one hand over here, mm -hmm. a left hook, one punch. Mm -hmm. So if I left my head in the middle, there's thousands of punches that can come my way. If I move my head to one side, there's only one punch that might matter. It's easier to manage one punch and avoid one punch than avoid hundreds of possibilities. It means that if I slip to the left, he can strike only with his left hand, only one hand, so I know which hand he is going to use. For the counter punch. I can still use both of my hands to one. Correct. And when I slip to one side, the opponent does not see. 
my hand. Now I'm going to demonstrate for you a left hook, okay? Yeah, um, So I, I slip over. I slip to my left. I smother his right hand, okay? Never leave yourself in a vulnerable position. Slip and move into a position, counter punch immediately. Remember, make him miss, make him pay. I will read out the fragment of the book which speaks of Mike Tyson who had been allegedly using 52 block style on the ring. A trained eye could see a lot of the 52 blocks in Mike Tyson back when he was in the prime of his boxing career. In subtle ways, Mike incorporated that shit into his boxing style. The way he'd stalk his opponent with that flat-footed walk, the way he'd kick up his heels coming out of the corner to start the round, the way he'd wobble his head back and forth on his neck, that all comes from knowing the 52 hand blocks. See, as far as fighting goes, I'd come up under the tutelage of Tono and his boys. They all prided themselves on their 52 skills. Now, one thing you've got to understand about the 52 hand blocks, that shit was developed in the baddest jails up north. That shit was perfected for being in a jail fight mode, having your back against the wall, getting stepped to by five or six niggas at once. There's also one fragment which mentions Mike Tyson and Kaz Damara as well. But there was one inmate in Spofford whom Kev wanted no part of. Everyone called him Money Mike, owing to his reputation as a wicked stick-up kid in Brownsville. It would be a few more years before he'd acquire his more famous nickname, Iron Mike, that wouldn't come until the old Italian man named Kaz Damara got wind of him in Tryon and began to groom Mike for his meteoric rise to the heavyweight championship of the world. If you hesitate, you will get hit. Because when we're on the attack, you close the distance and you're striking, but you need to move quick, quick, quick. So, if, uh, as an example, if I throw a punch, I don't wait for the picture and hold my position. I throw a punch and I immediately move to another position to throw another punch or two or three. Immediately move again to another position because as we know, every time you throw a punch, you don't knock somebody out. So you need to anticipate constant perpetual head movement. Punch, position, change, punch, position change, punch, position change. Immediately. If we have characterized defense system of the style, how would it look like? Physically, what's it look like? Yes. Mm -hmm. So your hands are up. Like a pendulum. Exactly like a pendulum, exactly 100%. Basically, what we see in the peekaboo configuration is a pendulum. A pendulum which is very hard to hit. It is a swinging target which is hard to get. Besides that, a swinging target tries to occupy angles of attack relative to a fighter, provided which an opponent cannot reach you with his rear hand, and he cannot use his front hand. Having said this, both of your hands are free, and you can now deliver blows with both of them. Number two, never pull straight back. In both instances, you're still in line with the punch, right in the middle. You need to be on the angles, side to side.
author of the book doesn't claim directly that Peekaboo takes its origin from 52 block style. Nevertheless, as we have mentioned earlier, attitude of the author tells us that success of Iron Mike wasn't because of his legendary coach and mentor Kazdamada and wasn't owing to his unique and brilliant Peekaboo system, but because of the 52 block style. However, as one would grasp, this is not more than a mere personal opinion of the author. But since one has formed such a thesis, certainly it was advantageous for someone. So, no running. There was no running around the ring. There was a constant attack. Make him miss, make him pay. Make him miss, make him pay. Was cuss against boxers moving around an enemy? Cuss wasn't, okay, I've, I've actually changed and put a little more motion around. I've, I've added more motion to Cuss's style, but Cuss was to the angles. Constantly just go to the angles, so you hit from different angles. Yes. A blow to the side, blow to an angle. Yes, exactly. For this reason, an enemy cannot reach me, but I do, because I am in the proper angle. Correct. We strive for not standing in one place, from one side. In other words, it is extremely hard to hit a moving target. We swing as a pendulum. This kind of animate target is also very hard to hit. For instance, I move on my feet, and at that moment, I don't swing the pendulum. I swing with my feet. I get to an angle of attack and start attacking. The enemy attempts to hit me and cannot succeed. I hit him with both of my hands, move to a certain position, and if I cannot move, I start swinging like a pendulum. He cannot reach me again. I get to an angle of attack again and I attack him. He gets hit again and it is said an enemy becomes incapable of fighting very fast. Because of the system advances into the angle of attack but not backwards. Cuss was categorically against moving back from an enemy. When a boxer moves backwards he creates a distance so that the opponent can punch him. What is quite clear here is the leverage. The closer he is, the harder it is to deliver a punch. One has to choose an angle to deliver a strike. And while he chooses that angle, the target has already moved away. There is nowhere to strike. And again, I have to move my feet. One tries to move his feet in order to gain a new position to deliver a strike. While he is doing that, he receives a series of blows from an angle. In essence, an enemy becomes helpless. And this very state is what leads up to the knockout moment. Cuss would say, when in doubt, move your head. I got to the side. like this you're not moving move your head move your head after your last punch don't lay in the middle move your head move your head you're not moving move your head after your last punch all right all right 
Is she waking now? Tom Patti and Mike Tyson are the last two fighters of Casdemara to live and train with this great trainer. Tom Patti is a five-time state and Golden Gloves amateur champion. He spent four years under the direct trainer, under the watchful eye of the master Casdemara at his house. It has to be said that Tom's father, Anthony, also trained under Kaz when he was a young boy, and his training partner was the first champion that Kaz created, Floyd Patterson. Kaz Damata used to always say to his fighters that if they apply the same principles of the fight in any aspect of their lives, they can become successful no matter what the endeavor, and bright example of this is Tom Patty. After leaving boxing, he became an actor, a writer, a director on TV, theater and in movies. Afterwards, he has decided to challenge himself with something new and decided to become a businessman. And once he has accomplished success in one thing, he would challenge himself with a new thing. And he has decided to pursue a career in politics. And currently, he sits as a county supervisor in California. Where does Cus Diamantos' peekaboo boxing style originate from? When Cus was a young boy and study fighters, his older brothers were boxers and Cus did some boxing as well. So he would watch styles and one fighter in particular named Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum was such a brilliant boxer, Cus studied his style and saw how effective he was. In the ring, he was difficult to hit, very very difficult to hit. Cus in different interviews would claim that he would get some of his ideas from looking at cats, you know, cats, even ants, watching animals fight. Oh, that's Cus, interesting. Cus claimed that he, that he got the idea of like, like a cat. He had a cat and the cat would always go like that and you know he, he refined that motion to uh you know the uh peekaboo that's what he claimed in the book of david remnick king of the world muhammad ali and the rise of an american hero it is also narrated that damara read books on military history and the works of nietzsche wherefrom he also found ideas on the philosophy of pain and stamina By looking at many people in martial arts, I can say that a few of them do not really know how to deliver strikes with their hands nor with their feet. Their technique might look beautiful, it might even be interesting by itself. However, it is not percussive. I mean that the strikes that most martial artists use cannot knock out a person with the first strike. According to neurophysiology, physiology, and human mechanics. In order to deliver this kind of a strike, it is necessary to take up a position with an emphasis. I will try to explain it in a very simple manner. If we take these kind of two legs and position them on a log, and if I gave a saw to two guys that are standing opposite of each other to start sawing this log, it will become very inconvenient soon. You understand, right? The reason is because you are standing in an improper way. Once you start looking for a position by means of hands and feet, so that you have a proper emphasis to comfortably exert an effort to saw. Exactly. Same thing in a strike in a position with an emphasis. It is when the whole construction dynamically is structured in a way that it lets you maximally discharge impulse power. For this reason, when we deliver a strike in this manner, it is not a strike. That's just hand projection. 
projection of a punch. This is not a blow. A blow can be exerted only from a position with an emphasis. D'Amato used to say that every punch has to be in such a way. Every blow. And when I occupy an angle of attack, I do not let my opponent to attack. Besides, both of my hands are charged in the position with an emphasis. I can deliver a powerful blow from such a position. Because the peekaboo style lets one to exert an effort in such a way that you can take that position with an emphasis from any angle. Understand, right? Look, for instance, here is an enemy. I turn. Here is the position with an emphasis. Here is a delivered blow. Here is the position with an emphasis. Here is a delivered blow. This being said, pay attention, that here is where an enemy's hand, they can't punch as it does not reach me, and the other hand is wedged. That is why each of my blows are emphasized. Not only can I make an opponent helpless, not only can he not act while I am taking an angle of attack, because I shifted aside, I am a target in motion, and that makes me impregnable. Try hitting this kind of a target. You know, when I have to stop for a moment and see that the guy is coming to me, I start swinging the pendulum. Target keeps being in motion, always, even if I'm standing on my feet. If my upper part of the body is not swinging, then my feet are swinging. My whole body swings like a pendulum. And I am consistently delivering strikes. And the point of power exertion cannot be seen by the other. In other words, I shift to the left angle to deliver a blow. His head is covered by one hand. He does not see my left hand, and he sees my right hand. I can punch with a hand he does not see, or with the other one. Besides, his rear hand does not reach me, and the front one is wedged. Inevitably, any boxer ends up in this situation, if he has to deal against the peekaboo style. He is in a helpless state, and doesn't know it. He thinks everything is okay, but in reality, he is helpless. And when he actually ends up in that state, that's when he understands what has happened. After getting multiple series of counter blows, he falls on the ring in no time. If you watch the series of Tyson's 20 knockouts, he clearly demonstrates this. 20 knockouts in a row is a demonstration of the peekaboo school. When Tyson is quick in placing an enemy in a position where he cannot strike him, Tyson in turn delivers a storm of blows until there is a blow with the right force from the right angle to knock out the opponent in the ring. That is how, in principle, the peekaboo defense works. There are some who think that Cus is not brilliant. There are some that consider that his peekaboo style didn't play much role in the history of boxing. Well, let me address such bold spirited ones. Enough of blabbing. Do what Cus did. Excel him. Create not three world champions, but four world champions. No matter what you say, you cannot repeat what Cus did. The time is now.